Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, whatever time of day it may be. Hey, got a uh, got another video here that I'm going to recycle. I'm going to pull out an old podcast and take pieces of it to give you your quick lesson on ser and estar, two verbs that mean to be. That's the next thing we have in this unit. We've discussed reflexives, getting up, getting ready, um, our daily routine. Now it's time to talk about the differences between ser and estar. So here goes the recycled video. Um, this podcast, like I said, is about two verbs, ser and estar. They both mean to be. And it can be pretty confusing for English speakers because we pretty much just have uh, we just have one verb that we use for to be. And uh, every year I, I ask my Spanish 2 students if they can tell me the difference between ser and estar. When do you use ser? When do you use estar? And <laughs> it's funny because every year the, the reaction is the same. You know, they they um, usually regurgitate the easy-to-teach responses that they heard from their first-year teachers. For example, ser is permanent and a star is temporary. You use ser when you're talking about things that are permanent, and you use a star when you talk about things that are temporary. Uh, other students will fumble over an acronym or a list of occasions that a teacher made them memorize. Uh, one of those is, is place for a star, place standing for position, location, action, condition, emotion. Uh, ser being time or trait, occupation, origin, or possession, profession. Now, those those two techniques, well, the first technique works well for me, uh, just something basic like temporary or permanent, but the problem is, is there were so many um, exceptions, you know, so many ex exceptions to that, that I would be sitting there using it, and I'd stop and I'd think, well, wait a second, is this temporary or is it permanent? You know, I am a professor. Well, you know, I might change my job some days, so that could be temporary. Or, you know, uh, one that students love is um, soy muchacho, I'm a boy. And somebody else will, you know, undoubtedly make the comment of, well, that could be changed too, so that could be temporary. So, you know, that doesn't really work too well. Uh, you know, language is fluid. You know, there there are exceptions, there are changes. But those techniques just really didn't work for me. Um what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a less concrete example of the differences between set and a star. Something a little bit more abstract, something that worked for me. It's just something that I kind of figured out one day when a light bulb went on when, when I was reading. Um, I was reading something that talked about the ser humano. The ser humano. And I'm like, humano, I know that that means human. And I know that ser means to be. But it was using it as a noun. They were saying, the human ser like the human to be and then it clicked the human being human being said was being used as being and that kind of got me thinking more about the use of said how when it's something that's a part of your being something a part of who you are or what you are and then the next thing that triggered in my head was the idea of los estados unidos the united states and how estados states comes from the verb estar uh, which means to be. So the state, state of being. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Before we get, before I get too much off track, too, uh, too distracted here with my ramblings over m moments of enlightenment, enlightenment in my learning of Spanish, um, I'm going to just do a quick review of, um, of to be in English. As you know, we, we do conjugate in English. Some of my students will say, no, we don't conjugate in English. I hate, I hate Spanish because you have to conjugate. And I tell them, well, you know, we conjugate in English too. For example, I am lazy. You are lazy. He is lazy. She is lazy. We are lazy. Am, are, is. Those are all forms. Those are all conjugations of the verb, English verb, to be. And so likewise in Spanish, we've got conjugations, but they typically follow a pretty uniform pattern. Um, you'll notice that am lazy, are lazy, is lazy. They look nothing like to be. And some people might argue the conjugations for ser don't look too much like the verb ser, but we'll go over them. The Spanish equivalent of those, yo soy perezoso, tu eres perezoso, él es perezoso, ella es perezosa, nosotros somos perezosos. Ellos son perezosos. Okay, so we see that like in English, ser changes each time. Soy, eres, es, somos, son. And if you're into the, um, the vosotros, if you're from Spain and you're into the vosotros, you've got the sois. 
uh, yo soy, tú eres, él es, ella es, usted es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos, ellas, ustedes son. And I guess if you were from Spain, you'd probably prefer for me to say perezoso, perezosa instead of perezoso. But, you know, that's just neither here nor there. Okay, whatever. All right, so here we go. I've got a couple questions for you. Um, respond to the question using the verb. For example, if I were to ask you, ¿Eres estudioso? Now, of course, if you're a girl, I'd be asking you, ¿Eres estudiosa? So there's your question. ¿Eres estudioso? What's your answer? Okay, a good answer might have been, Sí, soy estudioso, or soy estudiosa. No soy estudioso, no soy estudiosa. One mistake some people make when answering questions is they'll just take the verb that they were asked and just mirror it, say it again. For example, if I were to say, ¿Eres estudioso? Sí, eres estudioso. And what that boils down to is, are you studious? Yes, you are studious. Now you want to switch it to, yes, I am studious. So, again, ¿Eres estudioso? Sí, soy estudioso. Sorry, there I went off on a tangent again. Here we go. Let's ask you, uh, let me ask you another question. ¿Y tú eres, tú eres perezoso? ¿Tú eres perezoso? ¿Perezosa? Okay, a good answer would be, no, no soy perezoso, or sí, soy perezoso, perezosa. Um, now, how would you want to, how would you say, I am not lazy, I am very hard working. No, I am not lazy, I am very hard working. No, no soy perezoso, soy muy trabajador. Or, no, no soy perezosa, soy muy trabajadora. Okay, got, a, got one more here for you. Now, nah, let's do two more. ¿Es tu hermano? No, let's do it. Let's make it feminine so I don't have to uh, change the endings here or anything. ¿Es tu hermana muy perezosa? ¿Es tu hermana muy perezosa? Okay, if you want to say yes, you would say sí. Ella es muy perezosa. Sí, ella es muy perezosa. Last one. ¿Tú y tus amigos son deportistas? ¿Tú y tus amigos son deportistas? Sí, somos deportistas. Yes, we are uh, sports-minded, uh, active with sports. Okay, so what do you notice about the examples above? Um, you know, I don't know if you, you caught this or not, but they're all talking about characteristics of people. They're explaining what a person is, what, what their being is like, you know, what kind of people are they. Um, we'll come back to this idea after a brief, brief refresher of estar. So, like the verb ser, estar is not going away. You know, in all your studies of Spanish, it's not going away, so you better learn this one if you don't already. It's important to know the verb now. Like ser, estar also means to be, and we will be using it, you know, like I said, forever. So let's refresh your memory of the conjugations of estar. Um, they, fall, they all start out the same way with the est, but the endings are changing. Yo estoy, tú estás, él, ella, usted está, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos, ellas, ustedes están. Okay, so now let's uh, let's look at a little conversation between Jesenia and her friend Silvina. And uh, I hope you get a good laugh out of my voices here. Jesenia, ¿dónde estás? Estoy aquí. Estoy en el patio. Hola, Jesenia, ¿cómo estás? Estoy muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Estoy cansada, pero estoy bien. ¿Qué pasa con tus pantalones? Están muy sucios. ¡Caramba! Sí, mi perro está sucio y él me ensució hoy. ¿Y dónde está tu perro? Rey está en su casita. ¿Y qué haces tú? Estoy escribiendo un informe sobre la historia de los Estados Unidos. <laughs> Sorry, lost it there. De los Estados Unidos de América. Okay, hopefully you're able to get past the voice and kind of notice here. ¿Dónde estás? Where are you? Estoy aquí. I am here. 
Estoy en el patio. Um, ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Estoy muy bien. Estoy cansada. Estoy bien. Uh, mi perro está sucio. Um, ¿Dónde está tu perro? Where is he? Uh, está en su casita. Ok. So you might have noticed that it's used in a lot of different ways in this example. Um, we're talking about where, where things are, how things are. And we even talked about, like I mentioned earlier, los Estados Unidos. Yes, this is a form of the verb estar because, like I said, estar means to be in a state, condition, or location. Okay, with this with this brief overview of the two, now let's now let's get more into comparing them. Um, some teachers and learners of Spanish will try to, like I said, oversimplify these, um, saying that ser is permanent and estar is temporary, and this this can help you get started with it. Um, this is often true. It's not always the case, though. Soy joven, for example, means I am young. Now, I won't always be young. I might act it, but I won't always be young. But we use ser when we talk about soy joven because it identifies what I am made of, what my being is at this moment. Okay, and this is where we come into that little story I told you earlier about when I realized that, hey, ser is part of your being and Estar is state or condition or location, something that you're in a state or condition of or location of, whereas ser, it's actually a part of your being, what something is composed of, what it's made of. Now, if you are into the list, if you do like to see, well, when is it used? Basically, ser uh, is to be as in to be a part of one's being, physical attributes, profession, where somebody or something is from, religion, etc. For example, soy bajo. Soy alto. Él es flaco. Tú eres muy trabajadora. Ella es doctora. Usted es budista. Nosotros somos de Oklahoma. El libro es de José, pero los lápices son de Mario. Okay, all forms of ser. Estar is to be in a state, condition, location. Estoy cansado, pero estoy feliz. Ella está muy contenta. El libro está en mi mochila. Los lápices están en la mochila de Mario. So estar is also the verb that we use when we use progressive tense. Uh, if you haven't learned these yet, don't worry, you will. Uh, I am talking, present progressive. Uh, estoy hablando. Estoy hablando. I am talking. Estoy hablando. He is eating. Él está comiendo. He is, is the él está, and then comiendo, eating. So, to be or not to be, we hope that there is no longer a question between the two. Uh, that's the end of this podcast, but I am going to keep talking uh, just for a minute because some of you may enjoy that acronym I told you about. Um, so, I, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you something here to, to try to keep the two straight if you are into lists um, to tell them apart. So, here's your little bonus material. Estar, uh, place, Word is the acronym is P-L-A-C-E. We use estar when we're talking about position, location, action, condition, or emotion. Miguel está en su casa. He is in his house. Um, ser, we use top, T-O-P. Uh, that's for time or trait. Um, for example, son las dos, son las tres, es la una. Occupation or origin, soy profesor, él es ingeniero. Um, origin, soy de California. Okay. Ella es de Nueva York. Uh, possession, profession, esta blusa es de ella, it belongs to her. Okay, so once again, estar is P-L-A-C-E, place, position, location, action, condition, emotion. Ser is T-O-P, time trait, occupation, origin, possession, profession. Okay, that one was a doozy, a little long but thorough. Those of you that are my students, I want you to write down three sentences, two using one of the verbs, one using another one, and when we get back together, we'll discuss which verb you used and why we used it and make sure that we're all good with this. Hasta luego.